Aquinas occasionally appears as if he was endorsing and following well-established positions from other thinkers that came before him, when truthfully he is contributing to the philosophical question at hand in very crucial ways. One of those topics is the notion of the person. Ruithia's definition of a person as an individual substance of rational nature has made it to the history of classical philosophy and it is at the core of their scholastic doctrines. Aquinas seems at first to subscribe to this definition, however, upon consideration, some scholars have noticed how there are subtle but significant differences between Ruethis's definition and Aquinas's understanding of the person. To better see these differences, we need to understand the context in which the philosophical notion of personhood developed, and this context was theological. Of course, initially, the term person, prosopon, came from the Greek theater. Afterward, the Romans developed for their legal system a clear distinction between persons, who are subjects of rights, and rets, that is, things. But it was the fourth century Greek fathers of the church, the ones who brought the notion of the person to a theological context while wrestling with two tough questions. One was how, how was it possible for Jesus Christ to be God and human at the same time? The second, how was it possible for God to be one and three at the same time? These church fathers, the Cappadocians, referred to the person as hypostasis, that is, an individual subsistent that had to be distinguished from its nature, from the kind of thing that it was. May this nature be divine or human. In other words, a person is an individual that can subsist, who owns its existence, and again, this is regardless of whether its nature is one of being human or divine. Therefore, the distinction between persons as an irreducible subsistent and its nature, its essence, the type of thing that it is, was crucial for understanding these theological realities. Because we could say then that the person of Jesus Christ, having one single hypostasis, being one person that is identical with his divine essence, could also assume a human nature, therein the term hypostatic union applied to Jesus Christ, Christ. Similarly, in the case of the Trinity, we will have a common nature, common way of being for the three persons, that is, one divine nature and three individual subsistent hypostasis persons. By the way, these distinctions do not solve the mystery of how this is possible, but they shed light into the kind of being that God is. Boethius while agreeing with these Trinitarian and Christological distinctions, seemed to retort to an Aristotelian approach in his, his definition of the person. The person is a substance, a first substance, what Aristotle called hypochemenon, that has the nature of rationality, which in Aristotelian parlance is a second substance, an essence. Consequently, for Boethius, being a substance was something that persons, persons and non-persons could have in common, a shared genus, category, and then among substances, some are of a rational nature, persons, and some aren't, non-persons. Therefore, the difference between persons and non-persons remains at the level of the kind of thing that they are, that is, their nature, not at the level of the hypostasis, that is, at the level of who they are an individual irreducible subsistent. The problem is that this does not seem to agree with the theological distinctions that Boethius believed and that I just mentioned. These debates needed to place the principle of personhood independent 
from the principle of nature if Christ, for example, was to be one person with two natures, or if God and humans were to be called persons but of different natures. Aquinas initially followed Wethius' definition. However, Aquinas also says that the person signifies what is most perfect in the whole of nature, that is to say, a self-subsisting being of a rational nature. A scholar, Blanca Castillo, notices that Aquinas stopped using the term substance and started to refer to the person as subsistence, finally describing the person as a spiritual subsistent. How is this different from a substance of a rational nature? In other words, are there significant differences compared to Boethius' definition? Behind Aquinas' understanding of the person lays a metaphysical distinction, his essay existence distinction, that it is going to permeate the way he understands the person. More than a type of nature, one that entails rationality, a person denotes a mode of existence, the one that for Aquinas is the highest reality that exists. What this means, following another study by Schutz and Sarak, is that the person for Aquinas designates the immediate mode and way in which real being fully possesses its essence and makes free use of it. And why is this relevant? Well, it would seem that Aquinas' understanding of the person is more consistent with the theological discussions that gave rise to the notion of personhood. The reason personhood is something that we find at the level of the hypostasis of an individual is just that is not it is not just one more substance in the world, but a spiritual subsistent. The person then comprises the hypostasis and its nature, but it cannot be defined as a type of nature. It is something more profound that reaches to the root of existence. Only through a metaphysical distinction between existence and essence, we can capture that, and that's what Aquinas provided. The fact that according to Aquinas, the person is incommunicable explains why it cannot be placed at the level of the essence at the level of nature, because, because natures are said of substances. For example, human is said of Socrates, and therefore natures are communicable to their subjects. They are assumable by their subjects. A peculiar feature of the person, however, is that it cannot be assumed. It cannot be transferred to another. It contributes to what is proper and non-transferable. Then the root for personhood cannot lie in the nature and it cannot be made explicit through a definition, as Boethius attempted. As Blanca Castillo says, we can conclude that the person is something irreducible, incommunicable and repeatable, different from all others. The difficulty of knowing a person and knowing what a person is, is rooted in that the person is undefinable because each one is unique and what is singular cannot be defined. Aquinas' view on the person stands in a unique position to bridge the ancient Roman patristic and Boethius' understanding of the person with contemporary personalisms and even phenomenological approaches like Heidegger's notion of Dasein. Aquinas states the notion of personhood denotes relation, and he explore this aspect as applied to the Trinitarian relations, not so much to the reality of the human person. However, we can see here an incipient way of drawing the analogy between personhood in God and human beings that opens very fruitful ways of having a better grasp of this highest reality, the person, as it pertains to God and to human beings.